Hey everybody, going live here. I'm just going to give a few minutes for everybody to um, hop online here. And I'm just refreshing my page so that I can see any comments uh, you're posting as I'm doing my live video. I'm a little nervous. This is my first uh, live video that I've ever done. So uh, I put a little music on in the background to help calm my nerves. And if any of you notice that it's getting a little too loud, just let me know and I can turn it down or mute it, no problem. Let's see here. Just wanna get into my page. So, hi Robin, thanks for joining me. I see Charlene and Julie also uh, made it this morning. Thanks for stopping by and checking out my live. Okay. Kathy's here too. Hi, Kathy. Gina, hello. Um, so I guess if you, I'll call them housekeeping items. In my uh, meetings at work, we call it housekeeping. This is my first ever live, so um, I may not have all the kinks worked out yet. Um, hi, Kathy. I hope you guys can be patient with me if anything happens. I do have two crazy hound dogs and a couple of cats. So if you hear them in the background, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, my one dog is very stubborn and when she gets something uh, in her mind that she wants to do, which might be to go outside, she likes to bark a little bit. So hopefully we don't have any of that going on. Morning, Gina. Um, Okay, so a couple of other things. I'm going to have a prize drawing at my next Facebook Live, and I haven't quite figured out when that's going to be. It'll either be next weekend or the weekend after. I really need to kind of play around with my schedule to see um, how often I'm able to commit to doing these. Uh, a lot of you know I have a full-time day job, and so I'm just trying to figure out where it's going to fit in. But whenever my next live is, I'll draw a prize. Um, I'll actually draw two prizes. So the first one will be, I'm going to give away the cards that I made on my live event. And you get an entry to the drawing if you share my video, if you like or comment on my video. And then I'll have another prize drawing for everyone who ordered from me under my host code. And at the end of the uh, card making here, I will show you my host code. And then you guys can hop on over to my site, which is countrycardsbyrose.com, to place an order. So one other thing is I do live out kind of in the country here. So my internet can be a little spotty. If the feed is interrupted, above the post, you'll see three dots. You can just refresh the post and it should pop back up again for you. So the first thing I want to do is um, I have a VIP page where all of my customers um, are invited to join once they place an order with me. On that page I have creative contests. I um, I send uh, extra tutorials, step-by-step -step tutorials, and uh, we just do a lot of fun stuff there. So I had a contest that started, I think, about a week ago uh, where I posted a card, actually. I mean, it's probably backwards, but I gave some tips about stamping on DSP, and I asked my VIPs to case this card and show me what they made. And then I've put all of those people into a drawing. Morning, Kelly. And I'm just gonna draw that live right now. I've got all the names here. And so um, the winner for that, let's see, who is it? Charlene. So Charlene um, won the creative challenge. And she's going to win this um, set of five uh, heartfelt thoughts. I think we've got some thinking of you in here. Cards, you can always use a sympathy card, unfortunately. 
Um, and so if you would like to join in those challenges and win some prizes, you just have to place an order with me and you will be um, <clears throat> entered uh, into those. So I don't want to make you guys wait too much longer. So let's get stamping. I'm going to flip the camera around. And so if any of you get motion sickness, you might want to close your eyes. Okay, I think that worked. Uh, the first project I want to show you, so first of all, we're going to be working with our brush -o, and um, we're going to be using the Happy Wishes um, stamp set that came from the Celebration Flyer. Uh, this stamp set is actually a two-set package and you get tons of sentiments in here which is awesome I love all of the variety of stuff you can do now this set is let's find it here this one is free with a $100 purchase so um when you place an order that's $100 or more, you can choose this item for free, which is super awesome, when you go to check out. All right, now one of the new products that we um, have in our catalog, the Occasions catalog, is this really awesome brush-o crystal color. Okay, so when you order the brush it comes in this box and you get five cards. So you've got a blue, a green, yellow, gamboge, which is a gorgeous orange, and brilliant red. Now this stuff can be used with watercolor pens or aqua painters. You can use it with your spritzer and they make gorgeous backgrounds or what we're going to do today is actually use a die cut. And I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, let me grab my spritzer here. So, when these come to you, they have a solid top, and you're going to want to poke some holes in there. I use my uh, paper piecing tool to poke holes in mine. And this is a powder that turns into color once it gets wet. So I am just going to sprinkle some of that here. Now what I've done here is done my yellow in one streak and then my orange in another and then I just overlap them a little bit in the middle. Okay, now you're gonna get to see the magic happen. I'm taking my Stampin' Spritzer and I just spray my card. And as you can see, as it gets wet, the color kind of spreads onto your watercolor paper. You can also do this on shimmery white cardstock, and I've done it on the glossy paper, and it is gorgeous. Now, this would be an absolutely stunning background for a card. Um, you can stamp right on this. I found that basic black works really great and is very sharp against these colors. But I decided to do something a little different. I actually die cut this using the Butterflies Thinlets die set. And so in this die, you've got the large butterfly, a smaller one, and a solid. I thought it would be really pretty to kind of play around with these intricate butterflies. And so what I did is I die cut the butterfly once the paper was dry. And here's what I came up with. Isn't that super pretty? Now we're going to mount this to a card. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and show you how I made a card with this. Now the one thing you're going to notice with your brush -o is um, 
of course, if you've got water, it's going to get all over your paper here. I don't want this to stain my card, so I'm just going to set that aside and grab a new sheet here. Okay. So I thought that this um, butterfly would go excellent with our Peekaboo Peach or our uh, So Saffron. And so I'm going to show you a really simple, gorgeous card using a So Saffron card base. Okay, so this card base is just a full sheet of cardstock cut in half at five and a half inches. So it's going to be five and a half by <clears throat> eight and a half. And then you fold it in half. Now, a lot of you know, but for those new stampers, you don't need uh, to score cards when you're folding them the short way, only when you're folding them the long way. So this was not scored. I just folded it in half. And I thought that this would go so well with the Peekaboo Peach. So I'm going to actually stamp on my card in Peekaboo Peach. And I'm going to make a birthday card with this. So again, I'm coming in with my happy from the happy wishes, and then we're going to use birthday, and above it I'm going to stamp the wishing you a happy birthday. Okay. Now remember, when you're stamping, it's just tapping on the ink pad. Okay, and I'm going to come in here. Oh, that turned out so pretty. I love the Peekaboo Peach ink on the So Saffron paper. Okay. Next, I'm going to come in here with the birthday underneath. And I'm just going to stamp that over here. And then we're going to come in with our other sentiment on top. Isn't that pretty? That is so easy. Okay, now I love a little bit of uh, ribbon or baker's twine on my card. And I knew I want to place my butterfly on here, but I felt like it's going to need something just a little bit more when I was playing around with this. So I'm going to add some Baker's Twine just along the seam of this card. <clears throat> so I've slid my Baker's Twine into the crease. And then I'm going to come up here and tie this in a bow. Now, I don't have anyone else here to hold their finger nice and tight on my bow as I'm creating it. So, a uh, tip for you stampers working alone in your studio. If you tie this in a knot first, then it kind of stays where you need it to and doesn't move around on you. And then I'm just going to tie this like I'm tying my shoelaces. Come in here, all right. And now we've got this gorgeous butterfly and I think I wanna put it over here to the side. So I'm gonna come in with some of our mini dimensionals. I was so excited when I saw these in the catalog because those big ones are just sometimes too big for these projects. All right, so I'm gonna put my butterfly on my card here. I want the wings to pop up a little bit. And I think we should add just a little bit more here. So I'm just gonna bring in the Pearl Basic Jewels. And add just a few of those. And your card is done. Of course, you can stamp the inside if you car of the card if you like, or you can leave it blank to write a nice long note to 
uh, your friend who's going to be getting this gorgeous card. Now, this card is really simple. Just a card base and your butterfly. I actually made another one on some peekaboo peach that I wanted to show you. I would call this maybe um, a stepped up card. I added some additional layers here. I've got some very vanilla behind the peekaboo peach layer. By the way, this baker's twine is the very vanilla baker's twine. And this card ended up having a little bit more of the orange hue to it, and so it went a little bit better with the peekaboo peach. This one has a couple layers. And I also um, used the brush -o on some glossy cardstock. Now, for this one, I used uh, quite a few more colors, and I cut that out. I used the larger butterfly, used um, some of our other dyes. The gorgeous, um, I think they're called Celebrate You Thinlets that you can get free with an order as well. And I just did that on a gray on gray base. So here's some gorgeous examples of using that brush o with your dies and making a card really pop. All right, so. What do you think? You like the first project? That was really easy. I am going to set these aside so we can get started now on my next project. Now, I have to tell you guys, as I was preparing for my live event, I watched a few other demonstrators' videos going live and I noticed when they asked for um, their customers what sort of projects they would like to see, um, everyone told them that they would really like to see some man cards. So that is what I'm going to show you next. I'm going to use this Heartland stamp set. This one is from the big catalog, and I'm going to make some man cards with it. All right. The technique I'm going to show you now, um, I've seen it called, and I, I'm not using all of the steps, but I've seen it called the black ice technique um, before. I'm not going to uh, do the final step of that technique, which is to use some clear embossing paste on it because when I got to making my card, I actually thought it turned out beautiful before I did the last step. So to tell you the truth, I don't know what this uh, technique is called. I'm calling it antique copper. All right, now I've got some layers here for my cards. Um, we've got the card base in basic black. And... We've got a layer of our copper foil paper. This piece is five and a quarter by four. I grabbed an extra one because uh, you never know. We have stamping mishaps all the time. And then um, I've got a four by three layer of basic black here that we're going to be using. And I've got a smaller layer of copper, three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So I just did that one one eighth of an inch smaller than the basic black, which is going to give it this really cute, very small but sharp border around the outside. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, when you're stamping on this uh, foil paper, you're gonna want to use your archival ink pad uh, so that image stays crisp and I'm going to stamp this so that we make sure it dries before gluing it to our layer. Now these archival pads are a little bit firmer and I just want to keep checking here to make sure that I'm getting my stamp good and inked. Okay so I'm going to come in here with my farm scene and just stamp down. 
Oh, didn't that turn out awesome? I love it. Okay, now, the next thing I want to do is I want to antique this layer. Now, this is going to go on my card base like this when we're all finished with it. So to do this antiquing, you're going to want to have a scrap piece of paper handy. I learned the hard way that if you have any fingerprints on this um, foil paper, the ink, when you um, do this technique, the ink will pick up those fingerprints. Now, in the card that I made, um, it turned out actually pretty cool, and so I'll kind of show you that when I'm done here. But what you want to do is... You're going to take your paper and you're going to take your ink pad and you are just going to slide your ink pad across your layer. Now, so I don't get any um, fingerprints on, I'm using the scrap paper and I'm just going to come in here now and do the other side. So once you've done it the one direction, you can see these streaks. I want to even this out. And so I'm going to come in here. And I'll hold this up closer so you can get a better look. So here is the background that we're going to use. My screen froze here. Hopefully it didn't freeze on your end. All right. So now that this piece is dry, I am going to glue it with my liquid glue to my basic black layer. Ooh, now this isn't completely dry, so we're gonna be careful here. There we go. And this layer here, we can just glue right on our card base. Now I got a little bit of glue on my paper here, so I'm just gonna wipe this up. I don't like it when it's sticky and my projects stick to my scrap piece underneath. Now one tip for when you are gluing layers onto your card base is um, as I'm putting it down, I kind of pay attention to the side, the top, and the bottom edges and make sure that they're all about equal width away from the layer that I am gluing down. Okay, so we have that. And I... I'm going to end up mounting this here, but I felt like it needed something a little over in the side. And so I'm using our absolutely gorgeous, um, what kind of ribbon is this? Copper trim, it's called. And I'm just going to come in here and wrap that around the front flap of my card base. And I'm going to tie that in a knot. Now, after I get my layer mounted, I'll be able to trim the ends of this where I want them. So this layer is going to go here, and I want to make sure we get our sentiment in here, which says, just to note, to let you know I'm thinking of you. So I'm going to ink this up. And then we will stamp this. I should have stamped this before I glued it on, you guys. I'm going backwards here. But this should work just fine. 
Now the one thing you have to be a little bit careful of is this paper is a little bit slippery so you can see that this is just a tad blurry because as I stamped it down the stamp wanted to move on me. So just a heads up to be careful of that. And we're going to mount this layer up on dimensionals. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and trim these ends. And our second card is done. What do you think? Super pretty, huh? Okay. Now this one, I got some fingerprints on it when I was working, but I thought it actually turned out... Uh, nice. My screen froze again, you guys. I hope that my um, my video is still working. Uh, oh, and I wanted to show you as well that um, I got inspiration for this card on Pinterest, and I'm sorry, I don't know who made it, but um, they used the designer series paper behind there, and that's where I got the idea for this layout. So pretty cool, huh? This would make a gorgeous man card or to send to um, a woman. It's not necessarily defined as only masculine. Okay. So next, I'm going to do another, better put my ink pads away here, man card. And I'm going to use the waterfront stamp set. So my upline, um, Kelly, did a live video uh, using this stamp set and it was gorgeous. So of course, as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to get out there um, and make something with it. So I'm going to get started on that card. For my color palette here, I'm using Sahara Sand, um, we've got our card base here. We're going to do a layer of Always Artichoke, which is 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth. And don't worry, after I am done here, I'm going to post all of the um, dimensions for all of the cards on my blog. And so you can find it there. We've got another Sahara Sand, 5 and a quarter by 4. And we've got another Always Artichoke, 3 and 5 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths. And then a three and a half by two and a half Sahara sand piece. All right. Now for this card, I've got a few ink pads and I've got all my stamps mounted here. So let me just get everything. I'll tell you what, usually my desk is plenty big. But today, it doesn't feel big enough. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, let me just get some of these pieces out of the way. I'm going to use my Woodland C, I think it's called Woodland Textures Embossing Folder. And this has some gorgeous trees with branches. I'm going to emboss this using my Big Shot. Now, when I line this up, I want to make sure that it's straight. I want to get plenty of branches um, in the picture. So I'm just going to do that with my Big Shot platform. Run that through. And I've got this gorgeous 
background here. I'm going to mount that to my Always Artichoke layer and I'm going to use my liquid glue for this. I love liquid glue when I've got an embossed layer because I just feel like the layers stick a little bit better to your piece behind it. Okay, so now we've just got that little bit of always artichoke peeking out. Now I want to stamp a scene from this set onto my front layer. So I'm going to come in here first with the mountains and I'm going to stamp these in Sahara sand. Now when I stamp these, these are photopolymer um, stamps. So you're going to want something cushiony underneath um, so that you get a nice image. I wanted a more subtle background, so I'm going to stamp off before I stamp this on here. Like that. This stamp set makes it super easy to create a gorgeous scene. Everything just comes together really well. So next I'm going to come in here with some grass. And I'm going to do that in Garden Green. And again, I want a softer color, so I'm going to stamp off before I stamp it onto my layer. Easy. And I felt like this scene should be by lake. So we've got our marina mist. And so again, I stamped off with this before I stamped it on my layer. And then I'm going to stamp the trees in my always artichoke. And again, I wanted a softer look, so I stamped off for those as well. My dog is barking in the background. She probably sees a bunny outside. Okay, so we've got our gorgeous mountain scene here, and we are ready to mount this to our next layer. in with my liquid glue glue that on and now we're ready to put our card together so we've got our card base make a nice tight crease with our bone folder and I'm going to want this layer next to add just a little bit more texture to this, I am going to wrap some linen thread. I've got a knot here. Let me just snip this off. I'm going to add some linen thread. And I am just going to wrap this around. So to secure this, I'm going to tape the end. And I'm going to wrap it around three times. I love that. 
Okay, now this is going to be up on dimensionals, and I didn't want to get this card too thick that we wouldn't be able to mail it. So I'm going to come in with my liquid glue here and just glue this to the card base. And we've just got a hint of that card base peeking out. This is another reason I love our liquid glue is that I'm not very good at putting the layer exactly where I want it immediately. So before it dries, I get the opportunity to kind of smush it around and move it where I need it to go. Okay, now I'm gonna pop this layer up on dimensionals here. Get our scene on here. Like so. And I felt like we needed a little saying on the front. And so I actually went to my teeny tiny wishes stamp set. Uh, let's see if I have it here. I don't know where I put it. Let's see. Oh, it's down in here. This one is awesome because it's got tons of sentiments pretty much for any occasion. And this is a go-to for me a lot. The fonts are really nice and neutral too. Now, when I ink up these smaller sayings, I like to practice a little bit on my scratch paper because I don't want them to be too smudgy. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp that on another piece of Sahara sand scrap. It doesn't matter that it's not straight because I'm gonna come in here with my classic label punch and I'm gonna keep it straight in here. Punch that out. And then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals too. Just using a couple pieces from the outer edge. And I'm just going to stick that here. Whoops, I don't think that I want to go out onto the edge. No problem. I'll just move it onto the top layer to secure it a bit. There we have it. What do you think? That one was super easy. And again, this is another card that, of course, you can send to a girlfriend of yours, but would also be great to send to a special man in your life as well. That uh, waterfront set, oh my gosh, so versatile. Very excited that Stampin' Up! came out with this one. I have one more card to show you guys using the waterfront stamp set. Let me kind of clean some of this out of the way. All right, now this card, we're going to do some, my favorite lately, white on white. So um, I think that as I was playing around with the colors for the man card, I found that Always Artichoke 
and fresh fig look so good together. Something about that green and purple. So that's the color palette we're going to use for this card. All right, my card base is made with Whisper White Thick cardstock. Now when I, I told you before, you don't need to score when you're folding your card the short way, uh, but I actually do score my Whisper White Thick because I just find it gives it a nice crisp fold a little bit better when I score it. We're going to do some stamping on the inside of our card right now as well. And so I've got a layer of Whisper White that's five and a quarter by four and a layer of Fresh Fig that's five and three eighths by four and one eighth. And this is another where we've just increased our layer by one eighth of an inch so we get just that tiny pop of color around the outside. The inside of this card is going to say, friends make the good times better and the hard times easier. And that is definitely true. So again, we're stamping with photopolymer, so I'm going to bring in my piercing mat so that I've got some cushion and give when I stamp this down. And I'm just going to stamp this like so. Now, I thought that was a little plain, so I wanted to come in with some more color behind these words. So I'm using my Always Artichoke, and I'm using these dots. I think that they could be used for snow on your project. And I stamped off, and I'm just going to stamp that behind my Fresh Fig Sentiment here. like so. Okay, we're going to get this adhered to our layer. And again, when I put this down, I'm watching the three edges to make sure I've got about the same amount around all of them. I set it down and because this is the liquid glue, I can easily move it around before I secure it. Make sure that's dry. Okay. I'm going to come in here and glue our inside layer. go. We already have a gorgeous inside of our card. And now we're going to work on our card front. This card is so stinking easy. Now one of the things I am learning to do with my stamp sets is use only some of the stamps in it sometimes for a very simple card. So these trees are probably my favorite part of the um, waterfront stamp set. And so I'm just going to stamp these trees in the bottom corner here. And then I'm going to come in with my fresh fig. Here we go. I've got this sentiment that just says friend. And I'm going to come in under the trees and stamp it like so. Now I wanted this fresh fig color to 
kind of carry over through the card front a little more. And so I took my stamp and write marker and we're going to do some marker flicking on the front. So to do this, I typically put my um, thick end of the marker and I go against the cap and I just flick it across the card lightly. And this creates just a splash of color across your card front. Okay, now for just a little bit of texture on our project. I'm going to come in with some Whisper White Baker's Twine. Actually, I think I grabbed the wrong stuff, so let's grab this. And I'm just going to tie this in a bow at the top of my card. And we're going to use that same tip that I gave you before. Tie it in a knot first so that it stays put and nice and tight on my layer. And then I'm going to come in and tie this just like I would tie my shoes. And this can be a little bit whimsical. No need for perfection here. I like it towards the top, so I can just slide this up where I would like it. And then trim these. And then we're ready to mount to our card base. And I'm going to use some dimensionals for this to pop it up. <clears throat> okay. And we're just going to pop that white layer on top of our white layer. That card is so simple and easy. What do you think? Quick, huh? Now, I made another card and I used one of our Settles uh, greens. Uh, which one did I use? I used Pear Pizzazz. And for this one, I was, since the green was a little bit lighter, I was able to stamp um, in fresh fig right over the top of the trees. And so that's another idea for you as well. So we've got our simple card using the waterfront stamp set. We've got our man card using our waterfront stamp set. I gotta find my, where did I put my other card here? Here we go. We've got our antiqued copper card using Heartland. And then we've got some ideas for brush-o. With our butterfly thinlets. What do you think? That was super easy. Okay, now. I would love to earn your business and I'm giving away a prize. Um, I'll do a prize drawing for everyone who orders from me using my hostess code. So um, here's my hostess code when you go to my website, countrycardsbyrose.com. 
you can click to shop with me and when you shop with me you'll have the opportunity to enter a host code so this is the code that you're going to want to enter in that area now I also am going to do a prize drawing for everyone who shares my video and comments on the video so um, if your friends are watching after the fact they will be entered into the drawing as well if they share and comment so make sure you let them know you don't want to miss my next live video so make sure that you like my Facebook page country cards by Rose and also when you order with my hostess code um, when you place any order at all you will be invited to my private VIP page where I give you lots more ideas than what I post on my regular blog and some card tutorials plus we have creative challenges and I give away some prizes I really like to spoil my customers there so you'll get an entry um, to that as well thank you so much for joining me today for my face first Facebook live I had a lot of fun stamping with you um, again still figuring out my schedule for the next one so make sure you're watching my Facebook page for that and if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see for my next projects just let me know I hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday thanks again for joining me